This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this carved pumpkin design using Inkscape. So let's go ahead and get started here in Inkscape. The first thing we want to do is just make sure we set up our document so that we're all working with a similar view. I'm going to go to File, Document Properties, and I'm going to set the display units to pixels. And I'm going to turn off the visibility of the page border and close out of that. And what we want to do now is go to View, make sure we have Custom selected, and then we'll zoom in at one to one. And what I'll do next is I'm going to open up the Align and Distribute menu with this button up here. We're going to want Last Selected chosen from this drop down. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button right there. So what we're going to do first is uh, we're going to create an ellipse. So let's come over to the Circles and Ellipses tool. And I'm going to create a nice long elongated ellipse like that. And I'm going to make that a shade of purple maybe something darker on the darker end like that. And what I'll do now is I'll go to the select tool. I'll right click that and go to duplicate. And I'm going to make this orange. <clears throat> well, I'm going to start it out with what I like to do is you could pick a color of orange down here if you'd like. What I like to do is I like to start it out as yellow and then come up here to the fill tab. And under the HSL tab, I come over here to the H row and just slide that to the left a little bit because I like I tend to like that shade of orange right there. Then I'm just going to take this top arrow and bring that down a little bit. And I'll take this bottom arrow and bring that up a little bit. And I'll take this one and then just bring that out just a slight bit, just a slight amount like that. Maybe I'll bring that in a little more. And the next step is to click and drag over everything and come down here to the Align menu and just make sure we have it centered up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. And we can click off of it to deselect everything. I'm now going to create a duplicate copy of this ellipse right here, this orange one. So I'll right click that and go to duplicate. And I'm going to make this one a lighter shade of orange. So again, you could pick a lighter shade down here or you could do what I'm doing, which is I'm going to take this H row and slide this to the right a little bit like that. And then I'll hold control and shift and then just scale it in just a little bit like that. And then I'll let go Then I'll hold control and I'll take this bottom arrow right here and just scale that up a little bit. So we end up with something like that. That right there is what we're going for. So let's click off of that to deselect everything. I'm going to click and drag over this whole thing and I'm going to group it together with this button right here that says group selected objects. And then I'm going to duplicate it. But instead of right clicking and going to duplicate, I'm just going to hit control D because it's a lot easier. Uh, hit control D to duplicate then hold control and just move this off to the left. I'm going to hold control and just take this arrow and scale that down a little bit. What I want to do is lower this beneath the other objects. So I want to come up here to where it says lower selection one step and just lower that down. And then I'll duplicate this one more time. I'll hit control D, hold control, click and drag this off to the left, and then just hold control and scale this one down a little bit as well. And then I'll lower that to the bottom with this button that says lower selection to the bottom. So that we end up with something like that right there. And I'm just going to adjust the sizes of these a little bit so that it matches a little better. This one is a little too small, I'll make it a little bigger. And then this one, I'll make this one slightly bigger as well. And again, we're holding control the whole time we do this so it locks the proportions. Maybe I'll make that one a little smaller. Okay, so once we've done that, let me ungroup this last one here, the smallest one. You click ungroup, click off it to deselect everything, and then take just the purple ellipse out here and then just grab that and pull that to the left so that it sticks out a little bit because this is going to be the border going around the design. So we want to make sure we have something coming out of the side there like that. And then I'm going to hold shift and click on this orange shape and then click on the other, the lighter orange shape. And then while still holding shift, click on the other shape, the next largest group of shapes right there. And then just hit control G on the keyboard to group them all together so that they're all grouped like that. And then I'll duplicate them by hitting control D and then I'm going to flip them horizontally by with this button up here that says flip selected objects horizontally. Hold control, move this off to the right like that. And then just lower that to the bottom as well. Let me just move that in. What I'll do next is I'll hold shift and click on the other group. So we have both of these two groups on the left and right of the main group right there selected. And I'm just going to group them together. Then hold shift, click on the, uh, the center one right there. And then just center it up on the horizontal and vertical axis like that. And then finally, what we could do is we could just group this whole thing together with the group selected objects button 
and I'll hold control and shift and scale this down and just move this out of the way. So that's that's the pumpkin design right there. What we have to design next is actually the uh, the stem and then we'll do the eyes and the mouth of the carving. So to make the stem, it's relatively easy. I'm just gonna grab the squares and rectangles tool. I'll hold control and shift and click and drag to create a perfectly symmetrical square like that. And then I'll grab the circles and ellipses tool and I'll hold control and shift to create a great big perfectly round circle like that. And I just want to make this one, I want to make this one a different color. I'll make that blue. I'll bring the opacity down roughly in half. And then I'll grab the select tool. I'm just going to move this over here. Now, if you're paying attention to where this intersects with the, uh, the yellow square, this, we're going to use this blue circle to cut off a portion, a portion of that square. And that's going to be the left side of the stem. So I'm going to duplicate this blue circle by hitting control D and bring this over here like that. Maybe I'll make this one a little bigger by holding control shift and clicking and dragging like that. I'll put this one up here. And this area between the two circles is what's going to make the stem. So I'm going to hold shift, click on both blue circles so we have them both selected. Go to path union, then hold shift, click on the square and go to path difference. And I'll make this a shade of green, maybe a darker shade of green. Uh, something like this right there, that's pretty good. And then I'm going to duplicate that by hitting control D and I'll make that one an, an even darker shade of green. And then I'll duplicate it again by hitting control D and I'll make this one something totally different like red and bring the opacity down in half. And then I'm going to hold control and take this arrow on the left right here and just scale that up until we end up with something like this. And, we're, and again, we're looking at the intersecting area between these two objects right here. I'll hold shift, click on the, uh, the green object right there and go to path intersection. And then that's kind of like a, uh, a casted shadow on the stem, just to make it look like it fits well. It matches well with the pumpkin design. So now that we have that set, I'm going to click and drag over both of those and group them together. You could hit control G to group. It's a lot easier than clicking the button up there. And I'll just put this up here. I'm going to lower this to the bottom, hold shift, click on the pumpkin, and then just center it up on the uh, vertical axis. And then just take the, uh, the stem right here and hold control and just scale that down something like that right there and what you might even want to do is just distort it by taking this top arrow and bringing that down so we end up with something like that right there so now that we have the pumpkin and the stem done the next step is we're going to do the eyes so to create the eyes i'm going to grab the circles and ellipses tool hold control and shift and click and drag on the canvas to create a circle like that go back to the select tool duplicate that circle by hitting control d then hold control and just click and drag this circle down like that and again, we're looking at the intersecting area between these two circles. This is going to make up the shape of the eye right here. So I'm going to create another duplicate of the circle. I'll hit control D and then I'll bring this over here like this. Now I'm looking at the intersecting area between these three red circles. That is going to make up the shape of the eye. So you want to be, you want to uh, use that as a reference point for where you place this circle. I think I'll place it right about here because I like how the shape of that eye would look with it placed there. So I'll click and drag over all of those and go to path intersection, bring the opacity of that all the way up. And what I'll do now is I'll make a duplicate copy of that. I'll hit control D and I'll make this one. I'm going to make this one a similar shade to this lighter orange, but I'm just going to make it lighter. So to do that, I'm going to grab the dropper tool, which is over here. Or what I, what I like to do is just press D on the keyboard and then I'll just grab a selection of that to make that the same shade of uh, light orange. And then I'll come up here to the Fill tab under the HSL tab. We come down to the L row and slide that to the right a little bit just to make that a little lighter. Let me go back to the Select tool. Um, next, I'm going to duplicate that by hitting Control D. And I'll make this one something totally different like blue. Bring the opacity down. And then just hold Control and move this, click and drag this up like that. And I'll hold Control, take this top arrow and scale that out like that. Something right there, like that's what we're going for right there. This excluded area of the yellow shape is going to be like sort of like a, uh, a simulated third dimension where it looks like it's carved, the eye is carved into the pumpkin. So once we have it positioned something like that, I'm going to hold shift, click on that yellow shape so we have them both selected and go to path difference. And I'll take both of these and then bring them over here onto the pumpkin. I'm going to hold control and shift and just scale this down so that it matches a little better. I'm actually going to zoom in on this by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel a few times so I can see it better. 
Now let me put that right about there. Let me click off of it to deselect everything. I'm going to take just the red shape and I'm going to make that white so that it looks like it's illuminated, the, the, uh, the pumpkin's illuminated from inside. And you might want to adjust your uh, shade right here. I might have to make that match a little better. I think that right there is good enough. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll click on the white shape, then I'll hold shift, click on the yellow shape, and group them both together by pressing control G, and then I'll duplicate them by pressing control D. And I'll hold control and just click and drag this over to the right, and then I'll flip this horizontally like that. Hold shift, click on the, uh, the other set of eyes right there, and then just group them together. Then hold shift, click on the pumpkin, and just center it up on the, uh, the vertical axis like that. Now we can click off to deselect everything. There you have the eyes. The final step is to add the mouth. So to zoom back out, I just pressed one on the keyboard that brings you back out to 100%. So let's create the mouth now. Let's grab the circles and ellipses tool, hold control and shift and click and drag to create another perfectly symmetrical circle. Grab the rectangle tool now and then just create a rectangle going over the bottom of that circle. And again, this intersecting area is going to be the size and shape of the mouth. So once we've done that, let me grab the select tool, hold shift, click on the circle, and go to path intersection. Now what we want to do now is cut out a couple of chunks from this shape to make for the teeth of the mouth. So to do that, I'll grab the squares and rectangles tool, hold control and shift, click and drag to create a perfectly symmetrical square like that, and I want to make that red so we can see it better. Let me grab the select tool, let me click on this a second time so we get our rotation handles, and I'm going to hold control and rotate this clockwise. One, two, three. Three steps clockwise like that so that we have our corners going perfectly vertical and horizontal like that. And then I'm just going to take this square and place it over that portion of the mouth right there. Let me zoom in on this a little bit so I can see it better. I want to duplicate that by hitting control D. Hold control, move this over here like that so we have a second one, and then we're going to create one more. Control D. Move this over here like that. And next what I want to do is just hold shift and click on the other two squares so we have them all selected, all three of them. And we just want to make sure they're all spaced apart evenly. So I'm going to come down here to where it says distribute and you'll see this button over here that says make horizontal gaps between objects equal. That's what we want to click. And once we've done that, I'm going to group them together by hitting control G and then hold shift and click on the mouth shape and center it up on the vertical axis, and then click off of it to deselect everything. So next, I'm gonna use these squares to create the bottom row of teeth, so I'm gonna duplicate them by hitting Control D, bring them down here. Let me ungroup them by hitting Control Shift G, and then click off of it to deselect everything. Just take one of these squares and get rid of them, and then just select both of these by holding Shift and clicking them, and group them together by, hit, by uh, pressing Control G, Hold shift, click on the mouth, and center it up on the uh, vertical axis like that. Now we can click off of it to deselect everything. The next step is to take all of these squares. Let me hold shift and click on both groups. Ungroup them all by hitting control G a few times. Control shift G, I'm sorry, or the ungroup button up here. And unify them all together by going to path union. And let me just move them down a little bit like that. Next, what we'll do is we'll hold shift click on the mouth and go to path difference. And there we have our mouth with some teeth on the top and bottom. So next what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm actually gonna bring this over here onto the shape, onto the pumpkin. Let me bring the opacity of this all the way up. Let me hold control and shift and scale this down like that. And I wanna put this towards the bottom. Let me hold shift, click on the pumpkin right there and then just center it up on the vertical axis. Click off of it to deselect everything. I want to take the mouth shape and I want to make that the same shape, the same color as the uh, the inner, the inside of the eyes here, which is white. And then I want to add a bottom little lip down here, sort of like a uh, a bevel to make it look like it's carved into the pumpkin. So to do that, I'll press Control D on the keyboard to duplicate that shape. I want to make it the same shade of this light orange right here. Let me go to the dropper tool, or you could press D on the keyboard, just like that. Grab the select tool and I want to create one more copy of this object. So I'll hit control D and I'll make that red or blue or something different that contrasts well where you can see it. Bring the opacity down and then just hold control and just move this up a little bit like that. That right there looks pretty good. I'll hold shift, click on the original shape. 
and go to path difference. And then we end up with something right like that right there. Now we're pretty much done with the uh, the design here. Now I just want to make a few adjustments to make this look a little better. I'm going to click on the pumpkin. I'm just going to ungroup it. Or you know what, as a matter of fact, I'm going to unclick on everything and ungroup everything by hitting Control Shift G a few times. And that's going to ungroup everything. If you notice here, let me zoom in on this. There's a little bit of this light orange coming down beneath the mouth. It doesn't really look right. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take the mouth objects and bring them down a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll even make it a little bigger. And what I'll do is I'll just take this light orange shape and I'm just going to hold control and scale that down a little bit until it disappears from that area. I'll do the same thing with this one right here. Just scale that down so it disappears over here as well. And that right there, it's pretty close to final. What you might want to do is just adjust the shades, the colors a little bit. Like I like when I was making the, uh, the thumbnail for the video, I was really tweaking the colors a lot. So that's something you may want to do to make it look better. Um, okay, that right there. I think that looks pretty good as it is. Uh, that's how you can go about creating uh, a carved pumpkin design using Inkscape. If you haven't done so already, please consider joining the Logos by Nick mailing list in order to receive email alerts whenever new tutorials are posted. Your information won't be sold to or shared with anyone else, and you'll never receive any kind of spam or promotional emails from me whatsoever. In fact, the only time you'll get an email from me is when a new tutorial is posted, and you'll get to watch it on my website without any third-party advertisements uh, interrupting your learning experience. If you have any questions, let me know, and as always, thanks for watching.